Beach Airport. It's Wednesday, the 8th, and we're on our way to Fort Lauderdale to have a layover before we take off for St. Thomas and on our boat. Spend the night on St. Thomas and it's up to Tortola. Mm -hmm. Our first flight left Myrtle Beach early Wednesday morning and took us to Fort Lauderdale. Our layover gave us a chance to explore the airport and get something to eat. Most of the restaurants there offered Cuban-themed cuisine. It was delicious. The next flight took us to St. Thomas and the U.S. Virgin Islands. What a thrill it must be for the pilots who get to land there as they sweep down from the sky, ocean below, onto a runway that reaches out into the sea. With no checked bags to wait on, we made our way quickly through the airport and found a taxi that would take us and a van load of others to our destination. Most of them were trying to make the last ferry to Tortola, a risky venture as it missing it could mean an unscheduled night on St. Thomas. We had already weighed our options and decided to play it safe and stay the night here, so we headed for our hotel, the Windward Passage. Okay, here we are. St. Thomas. St. Thomas, get ready to get on the ferry. Off the ferry dock was just a short walk down the pier from where we were standing, and we were eager to get aboard. It would only be a week before the ferry would be bringing us back to the dock here, but we shoved those thoughts aside as the ferry picked up speed. We quickly learned why our fellow passengers chose not to sit along the sides of the ferry. At full speed, powering through the waves, we were pummeled by wind and frequently doused with ocean spray. Larger waves would send us airborne, weightless for a moment, before crashing back into our seats. It was a bonus we hadn't expected. The passage from St. Thomas to Tortola only takes about an hour, and the trip was both thrilling and beautiful. Looking around, it seemed there were islands everywhere, and I found myself wishing I had paid more attention to the names of the islands we would be passing en route. Way off on the starboard side, I could just make out the entrance to Port Purcell, where our ship awaited. At the ferry dock, we took a taxi around the harbor to BVI Yacht Charters, checked in at the office, and made our way down the dock to our sailing vessel Honeymoon Suite, our home, transportation, and hideaway for the coming week. By now we were famished, so once we got settled, and on the advice of one of the BVI charter staff, we headed up the path through a shortcut in the security fence to a charming little place known as the French Deli. Off the beaten path and frequented almost exclusively by locals, this little gem has all the charm and pizzazz of a Parisian sidewalk cafe, and the food is fantastic. Recharged after a rest and some fine food, it was off to the market. We had ordered the bulk of our provisions from Rightway online and scheduled them for delivery to the boat, but there were certain items that we preferred to pick out for ourselves, most importantly the produce, and what a selection. Returning to the ship should have been a quick jaunt back through our little shortcut, but to our dismay the gate had been locked for the evening, so we got a little unplanned exercise as we took the long way home. It was hot in the harbor, and our ship didn't have air conditioning. With every fan running full blast, we managed to get some much-needed sleep. The following morning was filled with boat orientations, chart briefings, and a lap around the harbor with our checkout captain. And then, finally, by early afternoon, we were under sail, just the two of us. We had originally planned to sail to Cooper Island for our first day, but we had learned that it had been an unusually crowded stop lately making late afternoon moorings hard to come by, so we decided to head for the bite at Norman Island instead. 
Okay, just to give everybody a little update, we are now officially on the boat, the honeymoon suite, and John is captaining it. There he is. I'm the skipper. And we are headed towards the bite, and I'm going to turn Norman the Island. Norman Island at. Uh, we're going to go to the bite um, instead of Cooper Island for our first day out. I'm going to turn it around so you can see the islands. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go real slow. And you can see all the people that are sailing along with us going also. They must be headed to the same place. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, we are at Norman Island at the bite. Behind us is Willie Tees. Not sure right there. if you can see Willie Tees or not. Big old boat. This Willie Tees. We're at our very first mooring. Oh, so this is it. We are cruising. Yeah. We got Just got uh, jumped in the water and got wet. And now we're sitting here having beer. Yeah. We're kind of late start today, so we haven't had a chance to explore any of the um, caves and uh, the Indians and all that kind of stuff for the diving, which we'll probably wind up doing tomorrow morning. Our original plan was to go to uh, Cooper Island, but we were told that it's been very, very crowded lately and we're having a hard time getting in the morning. So we will still plan to go there because the snorkeling seems to be really good. But we're going to go there um, probably tomorrow. Yeah. So we can get there for a little, uh, We haven't decided that yet. We'll decide tomorrow. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. We've decided we're going to do it one day at a time. And we had a plan, an itinerary, but I'm not sure that um, we're going to be using it like what we thought. Um, it's always good to start with a plan. Yeah. It's good to start with a plan, and we'll just kind of go from there. After relaxing for a bit, we decided to head to shore and have a bite to eat at the Island Bar and Restaurant. It was a hopping place, but the drinks were cold, the food was good, and the atmosphere was relaxed. We were officially on island time. <laughs>